Hello folks, I'm making a video here to show you six different methods to remove and reduce nitrates and phosphates in a saltwater aquarium system or reef system, all employed in the one system. Now, um, a long time ago I had uh, set this tank up with coarse gravel as a substrate and not listening to the professionals and being a newbie, um, I did not realize how much of a problem it was going to create in the future, like uh, a year, year and a half down the road, of how much of a nitrate problem it's going to create. Um, it, so with that, once the nitrates started slowly becoming a problem, I was searching for ways to fight it because I was determined to not have these nitrate problems and not have to reset up my system and start from scratch. So when I was doing that, I set up several systems and uh, got it stabilized. Uh, it was easy to control, it was controllable, but it was a lot of work. Now, I eventually, I changed that coarse gravel to sand. As you see right here, in this uh, display tank, it is a shallow bed of sand. Um, it's not really doing a lot to, to remove nitrates, but it is no longer trapping and creating just a, a cesspool of garbage in the, in the gravel that's creating the nitrate problem to begin with. But the nitrate problem was in the long run actually a good thing now method number one I'm going to point out here is is the uh, and a necessity is uh, live rock live rock is porous and creates uh, an environment that is healthy for the healthy bacterias and microorganisms that help uh, continue the nitrates nitrogen cycle working properly convert can converting ammonias into nitrates, into nitrates, into nitrogen gas, and so on. Um, another thing that I did is I really increased the water volume. Now, this tank is very empty of coral right now. Um, I'll explain that in a minute, um, but I basically had a problem in the past, but I wanted to make sure that my nitrates were down to as perfect a level as possible before I started repopulating this tank with corals. I never had any problems with the fish. They survived everything. Now, the, now another thing that I did here, the, the live rock is method one, we'll call it. Now, the second method is increasing the water volume. Now, in the other room, which is plumbed through the wall, I have another 225 gallon fish tank and a 55 gallon drum. Now, this increases the water volume. Two things come from this. You increase the water volume you can uh, deal with a far greater bio load, more fish, more feeding, and so on. Now this barrel um, overflows through the wall. I've got it plumbed through the wall here, and it feeds back up through the clear pipe into the tank. Now this barrel also, in turn, overflows into this 225 gallon tank that I have on the floor, and is pumped back into the barrel. So it's kind of a stepladder system here where it's circulating all this water. So the total water volume is about 300 gallons. Um, that means I can have more fish, I can feed a little bit more and so on, but it still didn't remove my nitrate problem. Okay, so this room's a little messy. It's due for cleanup. I went on holidays and left somebody else to take care of it, so I'll deal with that later. Another method here again is bio pellets. Bio pellets um, if you click on the annotations here, I'll make a video up that shows how bio pellets work. But they do a really good job of removing nitrates as well. I've got three of them, which is probably, again, overkill in this system. Um, but they're working really well. The protein skimmer, like this one is a mess. It's always dirty. I'm forever cleaning it. Can't keep up with it because it's overworked. It's really not adequate for my system. I have another one on order that is... Uh, probably 10 times more than I need for this system, but in protein skimmers, I decided I'm gonna go overkill on that as well. It removes the biomatter that's dissolved microscopically into the water, um, which further reduces the production of nitrates. Um, this one is definitely due to be changed. I want a better one. Um, over in this corner here, I have an algae corner, I call it. It's a light that is uh, pr provokes algae growth. In this corner, I let algae grow, and I've got a big ball of Kato in there as well. As you know, algae and Kato and macro and microalgae consumes nitrates and, and phosphates and assimilates it into their system to create their cells. 
every once in a while I clean some of this algae out and let it regrow. That further reduces nitrates and phosphates and it actually gives a more comfortable spot for algae to grow so it grows there instead of in the rest of the tank or at least mostly there and very little in the rest of the tank. That's another Prostein skimmer I had spare. I thought I'd throw it in there while I'm waiting for my really good one. Now, I was fighting with nitrates. Um, each little one of these methods reduced the problem more and more and I didn't need as many water changes and I didn't have to fight with it as often, often. but most importantly the sand is what solved the problem completely just about anyway. Five and a half inch deep buckets of sand, they're ice cream buckets. Now the reason I don't have a deep sand, this basically doubles as a deep sand bed. The reason I don't have a deep sand bed in the display tank is because I'm going to have to move and possibly sooner than I was expecting. If I had a deep sand bed in, in the, the tank, I'd basically have to shut it down and start from scratch because I live upstairs and there's no way that I'm going to carry that kind of weight up and down stairs and keep it wet and then not just crash the whole system. These buckets, I put a lid on them. I can move them. I can get the tank ready over the other side, um, keep the barrel to keep everything's wet and, and alive, like the live rock and corals and so on, and uh, move it over there and not have a crash. Now, <laughs> everything here seems to be overkill, and I agree, but I've, I've got redundancy, I've got backups, and now, as it is now, I can now feed my fish ridiculous amounts of food, which I do, probably two ounces worth of, worth of, of biomatter in the form of food a day, but my nitrates still hover around three, sometimes they peak at five, and sometimes they're not detectable at all. Taking the gravel out and changing it to uh, sand was the best thing I did. Now when I had everything cycled, when I had that, uh, that, uh, that all cycled and all I did was take my um, live rock, put it in the uh, tank and then start cleaning out the, the display tank and I started the display tank from scratch. But all of this water that you're seeing in this room in this system was totally cycled so it didn't crash anything. Um, now back to this room. Uh, this is the display tank as it is, and as you see, it's pretty empty of coral. Um, as I mentioned before, again, the denitrate filter killed that for me. I'm going to show you what it used to look like in just a second here, and, uh, and then you'll see why. It's going to be restocked again like that soon. But anyway, that's several different methods that you can use. You can use one of them. The essentials are live rock. Um, sand substrate only is my recommendation, not crushed gravel, and a protein skimmer also is essential. Um, so those are the three essentials. Uh, a sand substrate, live rock, and protein skimmer. The others um, are definitely bonuses and help a lot. And mine, like I said, I even had an enemy die in here and nothing and nothing died. It didn't spite I just left it in there and didn't bother removing it. It died behind a rock where I couldn't reach it. And uh, nothing peaked. I kept testing it. I was expecting an ammonia uh, nitrate spike, but it didn't happen because I've got such a good nitrates army set up in my system. It just can't. Also, I'm going to mention the nitrate coil, denitrate coil. I almost forgot about that one. Now, these work. They're not sold commercially that I know of. They're handmade. I made this one. They remove and reduce nitrates very slowly, but they do work. You can find plans for those online. So those are all the systems. Employ them all or whichever works best for you. And um, before I go, I'll show you my other tank. I'm going to show you my tank before I use the denitrate filter. Now for whatever reasons, I had no success with the denitrate filter. I'm not going to tell you what brand. I'm not talking about the denitrate coil, I'm talking about the denitrate filter. I tried very hard to make it work. As you can see, I got my tank looking very nice. This is about a year and a half after I first had it set up, so it was a year and a half season tank. I had lots of nice soft corals and and, and large polyp stony corals, but I wanted to step it up by making my nitrates get down to as close to zero so I could make it uh, an SPS tank as well. Um, now the denitrate filter looks so promising and I tried so hard and did everything that the guy asked for actually quite some time determined to make it work so I could have those SPS corals. And 
I just should have given up a lot earlier because what happened is that all my corals that you see here died. I found that filter to be very hard to use to fine tune. I tried so hard. I tried everything, researched it, asked the guy's advice, and what would happen is it would denitrate, but then all of a sudden overnight I'd wake up and then retest the water that was coming out of it, and it was spitting out massive amounts of ammonia and nitrites. I think I'd have it working over and over again. This happened until it got to the point where all my corals ended up getting killed off. And I since haven't repopulated it yet because I wanted to get my nitrates down to zero before I do that. So I never have that problem again. The good protein skimmer is the last thing. And then from then on, I'm going to repopulate it and it's going to look just like this again.